like I'm either in a circus or in a church or, I, you know, everywhere that Darcy and Brent sing is universal voice, which is our theme today. Good morning, friends and comrades. We made it. We're alive. We're here. Good job. <laughs> One more week into the new year. Whew, you could not be in a better place at a better time than right here, right now, especially as we launch 2023. So happy new year, happy new you. That's the phrase that I like, happy new you. Um, has any, does anybody make resolutions? Good. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was thinking maybe I, I might make one, but I like, to, I like to work on my success rate. So I was thinking um, my New Year's resolution may be to eat no more than two donuts at a time. <laughs> oh, it's, really it's harsh. harsh, sorry. Okay, two and a half with, sprink, <laughs> with, with the half being sprinkles. Um, or maybe uh, exercising once, uh, a couple of times a year. That's uh, <laughs> so. Uh, um, or maybe see, eating something green every day. Now that could be a challenge, but that's important. Yes. Just a suggestion for all those donuts and stuff. Yeah. If you crush them up and then eat them with a spoon, the calories have already dissipated in the air. <laughs> right. Just a minute. Can I write that down? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give thanks for that as so. <laughs> so it is. I like that. <laughs> I'm just glad, you know, do you ever just say, I'm just glad I made it through the day? <laughs> that, you know, good job. That is a good thing. <laughs> oh, sometimes I, I love making it through the day without falling. You know, the older you get, the easier it is to fall. So sometimes I lay in bed that, oh, I'm glad I didn't fall today. I fell during the ice. Did anybody fall during the ice? I whacked my head on the pavement and I heard a, a crack. It was my plastic hair cl uh, claw. <laughs> Saved my life and my, I thought, you know, I'm wearing those every day. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord, for hair claws. Anyway, <laughs> luck. Um, so, it's, so we're all family here. Um, whether you've come here for years or you're, you've come here the first time, is there anybody new today from, from, for the chapel? Yes, say, you're welcome. I mean, thank you. you. You say you're welcome, right? I say thank you. I say thank you. <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have some materials for you. Uh, we usually have a wonderful little lady named Claire, but she's not able to make it. But we do have um, great stuff for you to read. And, and if there's any questions, um, no, there was no tough questions. Um, announcements. OK, we have. Um, Looking at our, we have the we have the wonderful auction. Have you seen that? Uh, does anybody want to say anything quick? Is this the last day we can bid on this? Oh, that. Okay. And any anybody can bid. So take pictures and share with your friends if they would like something. We'd like to open it up to anybody who's interested in these amazing things. Um, and that's Kathy Daniels or Cheryl Guess who can give you more information. We have our food drive continuing. There's a collection bin in the library. Uh, clothing and household items. We are still collecting gently used clothing and household items uh, to support helping hands resources community. So if you haven't been using that um, orange squeezer ever, so you, maybe <laughs> you can donate that or, or anything, you know, anything that is useful to you will be useful to someone else. Um, future events, watch uh, for um, new events and classes and join our email list if you're not on there. Uh, happy to send information. So, okay, we are off to, let's see. Our congregational song with Darcy and Brent, Weave. Ooh, I love this one. I do too. Yeah, this is, a, it's in your program. They're on the little insert. It's on there twice in case you get confused. Um, it's good though, I'm good with that. Uh, I love this song. This oh. was a song that I learned um, from another church actually. <laughs> they, they gave it to me. And, uh, 
and I've loved it ever since, um, and I've sung it many times, and so I'm here to share it again with you. If you know it, um, feel free to sing, and if you don't, you'll get it really quickly. Weave, Brent. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together. Together in love We are many textures We are many colors Each one different from the other But we In one great tapestry weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love, weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together, together in love. We are different instruments playing our own melodies, each one tuning to a different key. But we In one great symphony, weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love, weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together, together in love. A moment ago, still we did not know our unity, only diversity. But now the Christ in In one great family, weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love. We let us weave, let us weave, weave us together. Weave us together, together in love. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can see ourselves singing that all day or humming it because we won't get all the words, but that doesn't matter. It's the beautiful melody. We always uh, invoke a blessing as we begin our service, so I'd like to welcome Cheryl uh, for our invocation. Thank you, Shannon. Good morning. I'm just drinking in all of your energy. 
This is a morning to connect with each other and feel that peace. Wasn't that beautiful music? If you'd like to join me, close your eyes if you wish, and just reach inside. Reach inside to that place that knows the truth. Spirit is with us, emanating through each individual person in this room. I can feel it. And not just us, not just those who have gathered here in the sanctuary, but those who are greeting us from afar through the magic of internet. Those who've chosen another path for their morning, they too are blessed. And spirit is working in this world in amazing ways that I cannot understand. So I say a blessing on this service as it unfolds perfectly in its imperfection, in its exciting ways it unfolds with new information and new adventures and new people and, and those who joined us before. And I ask this blessing and I invoke this blessing knowing that it is done I know that this blessing is real for each of us. We just have to listen for its message to us. And I give great thanks for being here today for all of the folks who've gathered, all of the folks who are praying with us today. I know that the music has uplifted us. The message is reaching us in individual ways speaking to each person as it, each person needs to hear that message. So with a grateful heart, I just release these words into the law, knowing they are done as spoken, and through grace, so much more. And if you would join me in affirming, and so it is. Now we do have an affirmation here, and if you would join me in saying this together, if I listen, I can hear the voice of the divine whispering its sweet, sacred message. And it shouts with joyous exclamations, encouraging me to live out loud. Yes, I am a living expression of universal creative wonder. And so it is. We're honored to have our reader today is Mr. John Eels, with his wonderful voice and his guide, Fajita. Good morning. Today's reading uh, hitches itself very nicely to the affirmation that we just read together. Uh, it's called we all came from the one. And Jessie Jennings in her book, More Than We Seem, writes, in our version of things, God is not a commanding officer, nor even a presence apart from its own creation. It is aware of all things because it is all things, as the intelligence that permeates and the form that outpictures. Ernest Holmes had this to say on the same subject. The search for union passes into realization, not that we are just with or in, but that we are of God. One with or in implies separation. The great realization is that we are of that which is, we are some part of it. We began as a point not in time but in consciousness as cells. Heart cells produce heart cells and brain cells produce brain cells. 
and multiply more brain cells and so on. Cantaloupe seeds produce cantaloupes, not broccoli. The heart cells know to produce heart cells only. We began as a loving consciousness created from itself, each having its own variety, color, and size, yet we are all from the same original loving God consciousness. We continue to be that loving consciousness even though many of us are unaware. We may act in a non-loving way, not realizing who we really are or from what we can experience. We might see others as separate from ourselves. When two dogs meet in a park, they will most likely sniff each other, but their tails keep wagging, and with agreement they play, dance together, and run circles in the park. Unfortunately, it may take humans a bit longer to recognize friend or foe, as we have a tendency to come from a place of judgment. It is time for a new realization. We have all come from the same original seed in beautiful, perfect varieties. With acceptance of each variation, there are new colors, tastes, sizes, and ideas. Let us accept all as the loving presence of one creator. Let us be kind, caring humans we were meant to be. And the bonus affirmation for this morning is, this year I accept the love I am and share it openly. If you you hear somebody say something, you think, ah, oh, they wrote that for me. Appreciate that. Thank you. They they did. They did. did they? That's what I thought. I thought so too. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Darcy and Brent. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I when I heard about what the topic was today, this song came to my mind. I thought, oh, geez, we Darcy. And then I thought, why is it there? And that's because when people talk about the New Year's, they always talk about, well, I'm making resolutions, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I think, how much cooler would it be if you thought, I am going to be all I am? What a concept. <laughs> okay. I had a friend one time um, who, who you would not expect had this, but it was very interesting. I was uh, teaching a voice class, and uh, this person said, oh, I, I wouldn't take that class because I, I can't sing. And I said, well, first off, I don't believe that. I believe it's within us to do anything that we feel that we w wish to do. Um, everybody does it at varying degrees. But I do not, and I've been teaching for more than 30 years, believe that, n that anyone cannot sing. And so I kind of twisted the arm and, said, and she said, well, I'll come, I'll come to one. But I, you know, it's not my thing. And I said, okay. And I said, I have a song for you. And she was like, what? <laughs> I said, well, I've heard you talk about it. And you kind of whisper it under your breath all the time. It's a very simple and very old song. But it's what you need to be thinking while you're practicing this. And this concept, just a second here. <laughs> and this concept of hearing the voice divine can come in all sorts of fashion. And this song is one of those songs that... Um, came to me as a child. And when I had this person begin to sing this song, suddenly they found their voice. And I believe that that divine connection is within all of us. And so this little song reminds me of that. So every time I sing it, I, I kind of chuckle. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine my key This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Oh, oh this little light of mine 
one that's already here. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Sing with me. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Are you? Are you? This little light of mine that's already there. I'm going to let it shine. Sorry for the mic thing. Sorry. Oh, you guys, where you were? Where were you last week when we tried to sing that song here? Remember that? It was okay, but this. Oh, we. <laughs> bless our hearts. I mean, we tried, but this really okay. <laughs> and speaking of light and shine, I'm introducing one of our favorite people, one of our favorite spirits, a slice of the universal voice. She speaks from the heart no matter what she says, and I'm so honored to sit down and, and listen to Reverend Julie Applegate. <laughs> Thank you. So, I got to tell you, I, I love that woman. Don't you not love her? Uh, so, on top of that, she had us all sing in front of the whole class at the end of the class. <laughs> so, uh, this little light of mine has a very narrow range. <laughs> so, I, that, actually, that kind of feeds into our talk. Thank you, Darcy. You know, I, when I was uh, 
probably eight years old, and I had a cousin who was almost four years older than me. Um, I wanted to, I don't know, probably it was my idea because I always had all these ideas that I wanted to take singing lessons. And so my grandfather drove my cousin and I to the singing teacher in town, and <laughs> she refused to take me on as a student. She said I couldn't sing. And she, she taught my cousin. And so from that day forward <laughs> until Darcy's class, I was absolutely convinced I could not sing a, a, a note. And I just mostly mouthed things, you know, unless I was in the car. But, um, and then I got to thinking, you know, years later, could I not really sing? I, I mean, I'm not that great. But... Um, or did she just find my behavior reprehensible? And I have never figured that out. So <laughs> anyway, thank you, Darcy, for uplifting our energy. For uplifting our energy. And God, that's so important. So last Sunday, we had experienced our, for those of you who are here, our annual burning bowl ritual. And usually that's a time to let go of things. And Shannon, I can see that. You are not letting go, actually, of very much, but that's okay. Um, because our whole purpose that for this year was not really to let go of something about ourselves that uh, we don't approve of. You know, we all have those things that we like to, oh, if it just wasn't part of who we are. And we think about that, and then comes January. Boy, I'm going to not do that, and I'm going to do this. And, the, you know, what we're saying is there are parts of us that we just don't approve of. So what we looked at instead of that was recognizing in our burning bowl, uh, letting go of anything that is unlike an idea of our own divine essence and who we are. And we affirm this practice of care of the soul. And care of the soul is, is, is such a nourishing nourishing word and a nourishing process to bring delight and good in our life and to take care of this sacred vessel that we might take care of someone we loved and why are we not doing that for ourselves? And I, I did tell a story for those of you who weren't here. You kind of missed the whole thing, so you should be here every week. But, uh, you know, I said, I was telling you that my husband was uh, before Christmas because we don't usually buy Christmas gifts for each other anymore. But he said, I want to get you a Christmas gift. And I, I told you about, uh, he was going to get me this uh, mukbucket cart for my barn. And that was pretty cool, because I need a new muck bucket. Um, and I was pretty excited. But then I started doing that talk, and I thought, I think I would like perfume. That would nurture my soul. And, and so you guys, I want to tell you, I got both. <laughs> <laughs> I got the perfume and the muck bucket. Uh, so, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's good thinking. So uh, to care of our soul. And then today we're moving into um, another part of this idea. And in Centers for Spiritual Living, there's been another tradition that in January, as, as churches across the world in Centers for Spiritual Living, that we go back to the basics. For four Sundays, we look at the four basics. And they come from the first four chapters of the Science of Mind, a textbook, which uh, I went and picked it up this week. And it's like every line is underlined. Did you ever have something that you just find out you got everything? I started in my first class in the 80s, and I underlined. And then I thought the next time I took the class, I'd pick a different color. And it's like a little rainbow in there. But it is so rich. So today, we're going to explore the law and how it works. Now, um, you guys, there's a lot of people here who that's, you know how that works. And there may be some new people to this teaching that this is a new idea. But, and I didn't always know, you know, we live in a universe of law. And I didn't, I mean, I always knew that there were natural laws. But I didn't always know the workings of the law of mind in our lives and it was like news to me when I found that out, like, 
There are laws regarding thought and all of that. Uh, wow, that was uh, just like this powerful revelation to me. Uh, so, so, you know, it is a, a universe of laws. Like, we have gravity, and gravity is law, and we know how it works. Well, we don't understand gravity, but we know it works. And it works all the time, and it works for everyone. And this is, and it doesn't just say, okay, I'm just going to work for them, and I'm not going to work for them, and if they ask me nicely, well, I'm going to dispense of it. And so it's kind of like our idea of God sometimes. You know, it's going to have favorites. No, the law, the, the universe is made up of law and love. And, the, and in February, I want to talk about the next part of this, the next time I'm speaking here. But um, this idea, you know, gravity, it, we can use it. It doesn't really care. It doesn't care. We can um, jump off a building if we want and test it and defy it, and we're going to get hurt, and gravity doesn't care. So the law works, and it works all the time, and it works for each one of us the same. And so it is with this law of mind. And this um, song, um, we've, I mean, not the song, the reading this morning. How many of you were just like profoundly moved by that reading? I am every time, and you know, thank you, John, that was really great. And the, I believe those come from the Science of Mind magazine. And if you don't take that, or I think there's some uh, left in the library. That was, that reading today was so profound. To get this idea that we are actually the divine expressing. And that's the journey, and I think that's the spiritual practice, the practice of waking up. But back to the law. So I didn't know, um, you know, this was kind of a new idea that my thoughts were powerful. And um, William James, who some of you know who that is, and he lived, well, he died over 100 years ago, but he was one of the great philosophers of our country who much of what we live out um, are words of his, and he was the founder of psychology. And he had this to say, because this was kind of a new idea. It wasn't a new idea. It was a new idea rediscovered. Because we don't actually create any of this. We just discover it, right? And we rediscover sometimes. But he said, the discovery of the power of our thoughts will prove to be the most important discovery of our time. Not profound. That bears a lot of thinking about. Holmes put it this way. And I'm going to quote directly from the, the textbook, which was written 100 years ago. And, and I could change it like I sometimes do the words, but I'm not going to. Man, by thinking, can bring into his experience whatsoever he desires if he thinks correctly and becomes a living embodiment of his thoughts. This is not done by holding thoughts, but by knowing the truth. And that's uh, why we started this year out not thinking of what was wrong with us and what we wanted to divest ourselves of, but how we could care for our soul, the sacred vessel, the soul. And so there's two important points in what Holmes said. And the first one, um, he's, he's talking about the power of our thoughts. And Ralph Waldo Trine, who lived also, oh, these magnificent thinkers from the 19th century, and he moved into the 20th century as they began to discover quantum science, quantum mechanics, this, this new uh, realization that underneath what we see is a whole reality that affects us and we affect it. So it was like new thought and quantum science kind of just emerged, at, uh, came to life at the same time. And Ralph Waldo Trine, said this, we are continually attracting to us from both the seen and the unseen side of life forces and conditions most akin to those of our own thoughts. 
we just draw to us. It's like an energy field. And at the same time, all these energy fields and, and the way electrons work, and the way subatomic particles work, and the way our thoughts change how they work was all coming together for this deep understanding for us and supporting each other, philosophy, religion, science, telling us the same thing, giving us clues, you guys, on how we can live our life in a way that works. And so uh, he went on to say, we are living, so to speak, in a vast ocean of thought, and the very atmosphere around us is continually filled with thought forces that are being continually sent or that are continually going out in the form of thought waves. Isn't that just fascinating? And that we know from our cell phones and all the things that we live with now that there is just communication constantly going on. One of the things that absolutely mesmerizes me, and I, I keep pretending that my grandparents were going to come back alive and they were going to hear the GPS in the car and they were going to be so shocked because every time I use the GPS and they talk to me and they tell me to where to turn, you guys, don't you ever just think that is like so amazing? And I know there are people who can say, oh, well, it's bouncing off a satellite. And the fact that there's a satellite to bounce off it really is amazing to me. So, so all of these things that we can't see them, but we can experience them. And they're like waves and, and energy fields and all of that. And it's so incredible. And our thoughts are the same. So this is just so important. Um, I, I was talking to someone. I, I also helped my friend in Beaverton with uh, some administration at her church. And they had a workshop over there yesterday. And they came in and they were talking. And they did that treasure mapping thing, I think. You, most of you have done that before. And he was saying that uh, Michael was telling me that his brother-in-law, uh, on a treasure map, had created this house many years ago and put it on and all that and just kind of focused on it. You know, if you've done it, I used to do it once every New Year's with a friend. We'd get together, several of us, and we'd do these little treasure maps. And I keep them year by year kind of stuck behind something. But he moved into a new house. And when they were moving, he pulled out these old treasure maps. And the house that they were moving in, he said, was identical to the one he put on the uh, treasure map. And I thought, well, wow, that is so cool. Because we have a neighbor up where our horses are that bought some acreage. And they took down the trees, and they moved up from California. And, and they, when they took down the trees, they exposed this amazing view of Mount Hood. I mean, it's to die for and or to live for. But it's just so incredible. And so she was telling me um, that her mother had this picture on her uh, office wall for years of this mountain, this beautiful picture that she thought was so pretty. And what it was, this view of Mount Hood from their house. Now, those things are kind of, I don't know, you can take them however you want. Maybe we foresee the future and we bring it to us in, in a memory. I don't know. But it's what we focus on. Uh, often, you know, it, it has a tendency to come back to us. There is a power and focus. And I have to tell you a little of my own story about that. So in my this treasure map, I did this one January. Well, I did this same thing for several years. And I put a horse on my treasure map because I had been telling my husband for years that we needed a horse. And he didn't quite see the need in a horse. And uh, so I put it on this treasure map. And we ended up... As a story, I ended up with two horses, not just one horse, which is another long story that you don't need to hear the whole thing. But I, you know, he could have done a treasure map too, and then kind of tried to X out my horses, but he didn't. And so we have the horses, and I have to hand it to him. He does go feed them like almost as much as I do and shovel out as much as I do. So, you know, I, all I can say. 
<laughs> is that this stuff works. So, um, and then let's look at thought and health because I think that's so important to most of us, especially after what we've been through. And we could find a massive amount of information on the mind and the brain. And what is known now is that the brain and the, and the body, they talk, communicate. When I first got into this teaching, there was, you never could out loud with, just in general public, use the word meditation. And mind-body studies were something that could ruin a career. True. But it has evolved into the realization with all these studies that there is a, a, such a connection that we're not separate in any way whatsoever. So I was reading this, because um, I read a lot of this stuff. It's David Felton, professor of neurobiology and anatomy at the University in Rochester. He said, every time we have a thought or feeling, hormones are released in our body. And they send a message to the immune system. And so there's this subtle changes and shifts in the activity and the inner generated within us. And depending on the quality of our thoughts and, and the hormones and the uh, neuro peptides and all that that are released will depend on how it affects the body. And it has been discovered that uh, negative thoughts really affect the immune system. Stress affects the immune system. So it matters. This stuff matters. It, and I was reading another study where it says stress can reduce the number of natural killer cells or lymphocytes in the body, which are needed to fight viruses. Guess what we've been doing? So, you know, um, we can't control everything. Things happen out there. People we love die. There are natural disasters. We can't control everything. But we can work to develop a mindset where we can control our reactions. And I, I don't say that it's necessarily, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy because it's a journey, isn't it? It's a, it's a journey. Uh, years ago, I have uh, some books by Robert Schuller, and I was struck by this one story of his. It just stuck in my mind, and I never forgot it, because uh, he it just, for whatever reason. But he said his father was a man of faith, and they went to, of course, this very, very conservative church. Uh, but there was this tornado. Uh, they lived in Iowa or Ohio, I think can't remember which, and this tornado came through and flattened the farms there. And their farm, everything, the house, the barns, everything, demolished. And, you know, you grieve. You grieve when things like that happen. Um, but he said uh, his father took $50 and went into the nearest town and bought this old house. And they took it apart, board by board, nail by nail. And they went out and they rebuilt the house on their farm. And he said his father was the only one of all of them that rebuilt. And, and of course, they went on to have children that had a place. And some became farmers. And obviously, some became a um, big time preacher. But I was so struck by that story. I thought, what would I do? And I guess maybe none of us actually know what we would do until we're in a situation. But we do have choices. We do have choices on, on how we're going to deal with it, how we're going to think about it. And the second point I wanted to go back to, uh, I want to read that again from Ernest Holmes' uh, quote, because I think that is so important. Man by thinking, or mankind by thinking, can bring into their experience whatsoever they desire if they think correctly 
and become a living embodiment of their thoughts. A living, and we do, you guys, we do become a living embodiment of our thoughts. But he's saying to create those thoughts that we choose to have our life look like. You know the difference, you know what I mean? So, but then this last sentence is not done by holding thoughts, but by knowing the truth. And when I first learned about the power of thought, I think I was like worse off than before I learned about it. Because I had all my life, I would just get an idea and then I would move forward and, and move into the idea and, and make it happen usually or whatever. But I would just have the thought, action, thought, action. So then I, I go to church and I learn that our thoughts have power. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, I suddenly thought, well, now I got to control my thoughts. And so, and for a long time I did that. And I was like forcing these thoughts. Do you ever just like pray so hard? <laughs> and and you, oh my gosh. So um, it was like putting a new thought in old wineskins, and the whole thing didn't work because it was so much effort and it was so discouraging. But because by all this holding these thoughts, when in essence I was saying the reality is this, but I'm trying to force a new reality upon it. And so when he said it's not by holding thoughts but knowing the truth, and John, that reading today, oh my gosh, this is the journey we're on that we get, that we get who we are, that we get who we are. And that is a long journey because we all feel like we're separate because we're individualized. We're individualized, but this essence of life is not just in us, it is as us. And so we don't have to beg or hold the thoughts. You know, it, it was really kind of like me dealing with that old God I didn't believe in anymore, but he's hanging around in the, my head, and I got to convince him. And did you ever do that? Did you ever like bargain and make agreements and, and beg and all of that? So this little card was still hanging around in there. And I'm doing that whole thing until I began to get that it's not about holding thoughts, but knowing the truth, but knowing the truth. And the truth is who we are. And it is a so profound, and it's an ongoing. It's an ongoing journey. It's the process of waking up. Um, Ralph Waldo Trine said this. He's. I just love him. The first time I found his book, I just could read a sentence, and then I would dance around the room. It'd be so exciting, and I did. It was just. I love that book. Is that the very universe in which we live is a result of the thought energies of God? the infinite spirit that is back of all. And if it is true, as we have found, that we in and of ourselves are the, in essence the same, the same inherent substitute, substance of that which created the universe. Stardust. Um, the way... Are we to place our thoughts in the truth? You know, I, I don't know if any of you have read uh, Emmett Fox's book, The Golden Key, and I just love that book. And he said, in, this is how you deal with the problem. You golden key it. And the golden key is this. It's a very simple little pamphlet. The golden key is this. You take your mind off the problem and focus on God. You just turn around, turn around. And I used to do that when I couldn't sleep. I would visualize light coming in and just focus on that light energy that filled my body, and suddenly my body would relax. But the golden key, to turn away from the problem, to quit focusing on the problem, quit focusing on the solutions, to turn away and turn our face to the Spirit, to the divine, to however we conceptualize it. And it works. And we're going to talk more about that in February. 
But for a practical practice for us today, um, I was reading uh, uh, by psychologist ways to when we're stressed and things are going on um, that we can begin to tamp it down because remember stress isn't good for us. It says find a different perspective to look at it a different way. To take a walk, particularly if there's some nature around, just to take a walk. These things work, they're simple. It's really not complex. Listen to a podcast. I can get my mind to listen to a podcast and, and suddenly I'm just relaxed and I'm not thinking about anything else. Or they said, sing it out. It's, and this is true. <laughs> no matter if you can carry a tune or not, some studies have linked singing and listening to music to lowering levels of cholesterol, I mean cortisol the stress hormone, and decreased feelings of stress. So how about we do that together? Let's sing our song. Which one? Do you want a little light or weave? Weave it? A little light. Oh, wow. OK. Um, yes. All right. So it'll sing us out. And how did our body feel after we sang that together? And the other thing is, you guys, when we're singing together, we create an energy field. And, and heart math will tell us that our, our breathing, each one of us, our breathing will become in sync. And so will our heartbeats. And so we will beat as one. So let's do that. And if you want to stand and sing out and feel your body with that. Yeah, like I said, you could be on stage to say the words. I'm confident with that. Just say it. Put them in, put them in out there in the world. Just say them out there in the world. And then think about what you're saying while you sing it. Don't just let, don't, let, don't be mindless. Be mindful. Let these words sink in, because this is power. This is power in this very simple song. This little light of mind breath, slowly. This little light of mind breath, slowly.
I just feel so alive and, you know, this is what being together means. I know that we can stay home in our jammies and watch anything we want, <laughs> but is it quite as good as being together and feeling that energy of shared experience? Yeah, so I invite everyone to be here, to be here. And so, our offering affirmation, divine love as me. Blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. And our third song is there in the bottom of your page if you'd like to sing it. That's an always, right? This is a great thing to remember, right? Bless it always. So let us just bless these offerings, bless these gifts, and bless the givers. Because what did we get today? That there isn't just us giving, but spirit as us, through us. So we can let go of the stress of that and let God be God in us and in our gifts. Because there is really only one. And I know for each one of us, we have healed that idea that there is less than. For there is only the allness. And so it is. Oh, and let us say our prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And let's stand for our peace song and then let's afterwards go down and share. Um, breaking bread together, snacks, and all those wonderful things. Now, with 